everyone. We are about to start our, I think it's our fourth um, Norwegian cooking class. And today we are doing Norwegian meatballs. They're called the uh, Kjodkaker, but we'll just call them Norwegian meatballs for today. These are made out of uh, beef and pork combination, and they are unique as meatballs go. Um, I'm hoping that we, because we're doing this at four o'clock, you'll be able to make these meatballs and have them for your dinner because they are so delicious. Okay, so first step. Um, we have two eggs and we are going to mix them in a bowl. I'm going to tilt the um, computer down so you can see what I'm doing so you won't see my face, but you'll see my bowl. Okay, there you go. So two eggs, and we'll whisk them. Whisk them a little bit. Okay. Next, we will come. We'll add some milk. So whatever milk you've got. Um, here's a cup. We are going to add one cup of milk. Okay. And then we're going to add a cup of dried breadcrumbs. Now I just went to uh, the grocery store and bought these breadcrumbs that are already crushed up. So that's so simple. And I'll just measure out a cup of them. And I will add them. Mix that around a bit. And then to that, I'm going to add a half a cup of finely chopped onion. Now, if you haven't already chopped your onion, now would be a good time to do that. And then just add a half a cup to this mixture. And I, this is the kind of onion I used. It's just a sweet onion. It's an ordinary type of onion. Now you can see that our our mixture is starting to get thick. We're going to let it sit for a bit so that it absorbs some of the breadcrumbs. And while it's doing that, oh, here's Shauna. Um, so while um, your breadcrumbs are soaking up the milk, we're also going to add the spices. Now, uh, we just had Shauna join us. So Shauna, what we've done so far is we've put two eggs into the bowl and we've uh, just whipped them with a, with a whisker, uh, a cup of milk, a cup of dry breadcrumbs, and a half a cup of finely chopped onion. Okay, so um, I'm, I'll just uh, wait a little bit for if you want to catch up, okay? Is it a cup of milk or a cup of whipping cream? It's a cup of milk. The whipping cream is gonna be for the gravy. So just okay. whatever milk you have in the house. I use skim milk, because that's what we drink, but it doesn't have to be skim milk. Okay, and you see that it's starting to get quite thick. That's okay. Perfect. Oh shoot, I'm not muted. Sorry. That's okay. I think I've set it up so that I'll only, oh, the recording will only see my picture. Karen told me how to do that. So, and for those of you that are caught up, we'll start adding the spices. 
Um, hopefully you've all got the recipe. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, two teaspoons of salt. Teaspoon measure. Sorry, Susan, do the onions go in right now as well? Yes, they do, yes. The onions go in. And now we're going to add the salt. Two teaspoons of salt. And then two teaspoons of sugar. That up. Mixing it. No, now it's getting nice and thick. Great. Oh, I'm going to put this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to add the secret spices that make Norwegian meatballs different than every other kind of meatball. First of all, <clears throat> we're going to add ginger. And it's half a teaspoon. Now I've got this fancy teaspoon thing where I can just uh, move the little slot. And now I have a half a teaspoon. <laughs> so a half a teaspoon of ginger. Oh, sorry, this minute. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to take a photo um, as soon as we've got all of this mixed up. We haven't quite got there yet. I made myself little notes this time, but thank you for the reminder, Sadie. Okay. I am still get on the spices, Susan, if you guys can just wait a sec. It's not a problem. We, yeah. We're still at the onions, actually. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. I can slow down. I pre chop my onions. Oh, yes. Very smart. I did too. Well, one of the reasons why I pre chopped mine is because I didn't want to be crying while I was teaching this class. <laughs> I always cry with onions. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue to add the spices, but um, I can review this. I'm now adding a half a teaspoon of allspice and then a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And if you want me to repeat that, I can do that. Oh, that nutmeg smells so good. Okay. Everybody doing okay with the spices? Just let me know if you want me to slow down. Okay. For those of you who have got this far, to take a picture of this mixture. No meat in it yet. This is your first picture. Sorry, Susan. So it's just cayenne, nutmeg, and ginger going in right now? What no about cayenne yet. Oh, no. Sorry, not cayenne. Just a ginger, nutmeg. Ginger, nutmeg, and allspice. And then what about salt and sugar? Is that later? Salt and sugar, yes. Okay. So um, and just the way it's written down, if you're looking at the menu, the first First is two teaspoons of salt, then two teaspoons of sugar, a half a teaspoon of brown ginger, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a half a teaspoon of allspice. And then if you want, a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And I 
say I didn't put the pepper out. Not cayenne pepper, regular pepper. Ground black pepper. Only a quarter teaspoon. Those are all the spices. And we're just going to let this sit um, and we'll go on to preparing the meat. So I'm just going to put this over here and get another bowl out. Okay. Now, I have a little scale because this recipe calls for um, two pounds of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. The other thing you could do though is just get a package because the packages are pretty much a pound. I'll measure it out uh, just because I've got a little scale, but uh, if you've got two packages of ground beef like this and one, and one package of ground pork, that's what you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it properly. So put the bowl on the scale, put it to zero. Measure. Beep. Not in kilograms. Yeah, one, one pound. Look at that. About perfect. Okay, it's just slightly over two pounds. Which is fine because this actually is a pretty flexible um, recipe. So if you have a little more or a little less meat, it still seems to work just fine. And there's the pork and there I go, just slightly over three pounds of meat. scale away. Having a little kitchen scale is really handy when you're doing Norwegian cooking because they do have a lot of uh, measurements in pounds or ounces or kilograms and milk and uh, you know either either metric or what is the other one called anyway <laughs> the pounds and ounces one. Okay we're gonna bring our Bowl with all of the breadcrumbs and milk and stuff. And now we will add all of this meat into this bowl. Like that. I'm going to take my rings off because I forgot to. Make sure you've washed your hands really well. Why don't we take a pause and we'll wash our hands again. And right now we're going to turn our oven on to um, 400. And then take a cookie sheet and I've got it covered with parchment paper um, because I find that it uh, helps with the cleanup and also um, it's just, uh, I just find that the meatballs um, cook better when they're on parchment paper. So I have two. Yeah, I have uh, two cookie sheets there because we're going to make a lot of meatballs. So now, if um, if you've got your cookie sheets prepared and your oven on, we'll start mixing the meat. So I'm going to give you a minute to get that done. Okay.
Boy, I tell you, I can already smell the spices in this. And as soon as we have mixed the meat together, then we'll take another picture before, just before we start forming the balls, okay? I'm going to start mixing this with my hands as I'm basically ready. So, are we supposed to add the pork as well? Yes, add all of the meat at the same time. And we'll mix it for a while. Can we get all of that breadcrumbs mixed in? So what I was thinking that I would do in December for our last class for this year is I'm going to make a cookie called the Berliner Kranzer. And it is, it's so Christmassy because it's formed in the shape of a wreath. So it's not a recipe I've ever made before, so I'll get to practice ahead of time. But it's um, one I've certainly eaten and it's so delicious. I thought that would be a fun thing to make for Christmas. Okay. So we'll get all the little bits of breadcrumbs mixed right in and the meat should look um, off. We shouldn't have any separation between the pork and the beef. We all mixed up. Hey, hey Susan. Yes. Is this a little off topic, but are we being recorded as well? I uh, yes, you are. But um, Karen has will ha edit it for me. Your faces are not being recorded. I've okay. set it up only just for my my face, but your voices. But uh, just. Wondering because the cat just attacked Wesley in the background. I'm just wondering if it's on video. It's not on video. Okay. No. But, but I didn't hear it, so you must have been mute. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, Karen will edit some of this out. And most of the questions have been good questions, so they're useful in the video. No. Okay, now I'm just going to wash my hands so I can get my cookie sheet over here. I don't have a lot of space, but I, I want to, um, to have my cookie sheet ready. This would be a good time to take a picture of the meat if you've got it all mixed up. Um, mine is pretty good. See? It's all mixed up now. Okay, I have a cookie sheet here with some parchment paper. Now I'm going to make balls that are about an inch round, like this. It should look like that. They don't really spread out, so um, as long as they're not touching each other, you can put them pretty close together. Like that. Oops, you can't see that. There. <laughs> yeah, this will take us a little while. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I tell you, already smells good. It's not even cooked. So most of you probably know that I've made these meatballs for a hundred people for our meatball dinner in January, which we are not having this year because we can't put a hundred people together. So it is always a big hit. For people who like meat. <clears throat> so Norwegians generally eat, um, traditionally eat, I mean they're they're pretty eclectic these days, but traditionally Norwegians would eat beef, pork, and um, lamb or mutton. Um, more often lamb than beef. So a lot of the recipes have um, uh, have lamb in them. This particular one doesn't, but <clears throat> many of them do. The other thing that uh, is very popular in Norway, of course, is fish. So they probably eat, traditionally, half of their meals would be with fish, the ones that have um, protein, and the others would be with uh, lamb or pork and sometimes beef. Okay. All right. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six nine four is twenty-four. You know, twenty-four on that one. Then I have another one I'm going to get. So as I said, these uh, meatballs we're going to bake. We're not going to fry them. <clears throat> it gives them a different texture when we bake them. And they don't tend to fall apart.
I'm going to have to squeeze one more on the other tray. There. Okay. Okay, we have oops, two trays of beet balls, and this is a great time to take another picture once you have your meat balls to this stage. Okay, my oven is just about ready, so I'm going to put them in the oven for 18 minutes. I find that 18 minutes is just about perfect for timing. Oh, is it shut? Yes, they can be really close together. Um, they are, the meatballs um, are, are not going to stick together. As long as they don't touch, it's fine. Any other questions so far? And please take a picture once they are all formed on the cookie sheet. We'll put them in the oven and we will take a picture of them again when they're done. Now, while the uh, meatballs are cooking, we can start working on the gravy. So what I would like you guys to do is let me know if you've got your um, meatballs in the oven so I don't get too far ahead of you. I'm just going to put you on gallery view so you can give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so let me know if you've got the meatballs in the oven. Not yet. Okay, that's fine. How about you, Kian? Yes? Yes, Shauna? Okay, we'll just wait a couple of minutes. In the meantime, get yourself a Dutch oven. Our big pot like this. Okay. Will this work or do I need a bigger pot? Hold on, let me just look at you. Uh, no, that should be fine. You need to be able to fit all your meatballs in it. So that's the, uh, that's the key. While we're making the gravy, that pot is big enough. If it ends up being not big enough, then you may have to find something larger. I find that this works perfectly. Okay. Now, 
I have some more chopped onions here. We only need two tablespoons, so just to give it, the gravy a little bit of flavor. I put some onions in like that. And then I need three tablespoons of butter. And I have some butter here that's soft. So I'll use my, I'll use this tablespoon. Because I find the sliding one doesn't work quite as well for butter. But that's fine. Just measure three tablespoons of butter into the pot. So we're going to make a roux, flour butter thing, cooking it on the stove. Um, and we need five tablespoons of, all, of flour. But um, what we're going to do before we put that, it, we're going to put this uh, butter and onions on the stove and saute it. I'm going to use my whisk again. Heat up. Okay, this is uh, this is what I have for beef broth. I just bought some already made some commercial. And uh, the next step is going to be the all-purpose flour. So what I'm going to do is just take this, this empty um, measuring cup and I'll put my flour in there so it's ready. Then I can take it over to the stove and start to add it when it's time to do that. Flour. What? Sorry, Susan. What step are we on? Sorry, what did you say? You're, oh, we are. We're um, right now. We're just melting the butter. We're going to saute the onions. The onions and the butter are in my pot. And while I'm doing that, I'm just measuring out the flour so I have it ready. So basically, I'm waiting for the, um, the butter to melt and saute the onions. So I'm just going to put five tablespoons of flour into this measuring cup. Sure. So I have it ready. I'm going to go pay attention to my stove. Just let the butter melt. Uh -oh. I just got stuff on my mouse pad. That's all. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's my chat. Um. Okay, so uh, what we've done so far, we've got the uh, meatballs in the oven, correct? Then um, I measured the butter, three tablespoons of butter, into a large pot, and I added two tablespoons of finely chopped onions. Right now, they're just heating up. So, um, you know, you're pretty much at the same place that I'm at. I have the heat on medium. Okay. 
Butter's just starting to melt. And I'm sauteing the onions till they are um, soft. Not super cooked, just soft. I'm going to put the flour over here. What, the other thing that I did was I measured five tablespoons of flour into just a measuring cup. So I have it ready. And while that is sauteing, I'm going to measure the beef broth. So I have that ready as well. So I need four cups of beef broth, which is probably about this whole container. Anyway, we'll measure it. It'll be close enough. Oh, look at that, four cups. Hi, Susan, have we already put the flour in? Not yeah, yet. Oh, we're adding the broth first? No, we're not. I'm just measuring it. Oh, okay. oh, okay. I'm just measuring it. That's all I'm doing. I measured the flour. I measured the broth. Now that the onions are starting to cook, I'm going to add the flour. Okay, and stir it. Um, Susan, did you, that one box fill up four cups? It did. It Perfect, did. thank you. I so thought it was four cups. Yeah, it is. It's four cups. I just thought I'd measure it just to show you, right? Okay, so now I'm going to add the flour and I'm going to keep stirring it so I can cook the flour a bit in the uh, butter. It's going to go all, all clumpy and grainy, but we'll gradually start adding the, the beef broth and that will uh, help it. So we'll add a little bit of beef broth and stir. Sorry, it is. It's hard to see. But it's starting to get smooth. I've added a little bit of beef broth and stirred it. It's starting to get smooth, and now I'm going to continue to add beef broth over the heat. Medium heat. Tip it to make sure that it's not getting too lumpy. There, is that better? Yeah, that is better. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to continue to stir it and watch it. Hope, and it will thicken up a bit. And, uh, let that continue to cook. Um, our, my, my uh, meatballs have got about four minutes left. 
Uh, okay, now, while that is heating up, I'm going to take my measuring cup and measure a half a cup of whipping cream. There's my whipping cream. Half a cup. And the other thing that I have is some cayenne pepper. Um, I couldn't find any white pepper. Um, it's nice to have, but the cay have, putting cayenne in is good too. So um, you can put both in or one or the other. So whatever, whichever one you have, and you want like a dash. So just a little bit of flavoring of this. Before we put the, um, the whipping cream in, though, we want this to thicken a bit. Okay. I think you can wait to take a picture uh, when your meatballs are in this broth. You don't really need to take a picture of that. Good. How's everyone doing? So I'll turn to calorie view. Good. Put up your you are? Everything going okay? Any? Oh, hi, Wesley. <laughs> Good. Okay, glad to see you. <laughs> so my broth is just starting to boil a little bit. Starting to get a little bit thicker. Okay. Susan? Yes. I cut my finger. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm behind as far as the gravy is concerned. Besides, I don't have the broth. Oh, well, um, you've made this before, though, Enid. I know you have. Yeah, so yeah. You should be okay. And yeah. the nice thing I've, made about it many, I've made it many, many times. With yes, you, you have. Yeah, so yeah. everybody, uh, what Enid brings up a good point, or it reminded me of something, and that is that it is perfectly okay to freeze the meatballs once they're cooked and make the gravy at another time. I have yeah. done that when I've had to feed a lot of people. I've made yeah. the meatballs and then I made the gravy just before serving. And so you can do that. It, uh, it, they freeze beautifully. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that these meatballs are wonderful with potatoes. Um, Norwegians generally use uh, boiled potatoes. But you can also use mashed potatoes or roasted potatoes. That's my uh, meatballs. They are done. So I'm going to check them. All right. I'm going to bring them over for you to see. These meatballs are done.
Okay. Oh, they smell wonderful too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the uh, whipping cream into the broth. I stir it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to add a dash of cayenne pepper. And I'm shaking a little bit in there. And that one is purely a matter of taste. It's not necessary. It just gives it a little bit of a more of a bite. And the, the white pepper is also wonderful. But again, it's a matter of taste. Now, okay, so my broth is ready. It looks pretty liquid. Oops, I don't think you can see it. But once I add all the meatballs in, it'll be just the right thickness. So I'll get a spatula and I'll, oh, here, I'll use a spoon. And I'll just add the meatballs into my broth. This recipe made about 50 meatballs. All of them are about an inch big. Okay, and I'm just going to show you one meatball. And you see the bottom is uh, slightly brown and it's very solid. When you bake them, they stay really solid, they don't fall apart. And there you go, Norwegian meatballs. <laughs> so now you just need to boil yourself up some potatoes and you've got a great dinner. Um, you could, yeah, actually traditionally, um, it's served with circle, which is kind of a cabbage, um, caraway yeah, seeds, or mushy peas. Yeah. Um, but there's no reason why you can't put any kind of vegetable that you prefer with them. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I'm just going to turn off the recording now.